Hi, everyone, and welcome to Facebook Live. Happy New Year. Do you have any plans for this year? Are you inspired? Do you have goals? Well, I'll think, I think you'll love tonight's interview with Julie Madison. Let me introduce her. She is an open water solo exploratory swimmer with about 10 years of experience. She's age group placed first in the Alligator Reef Lighthouse, the New York Little Red Lighthouse Swim. She has taken third overall in the 10K Swim in Miami, but her greatest accomplishments have taken place outside of the competitive arena, most recently a circumnavigation of Anna Maria Island here in Manatee County, Florida. It's, it was first... What Julie has done, we think, is the very first person to swim around Anna Maria Island. We've done our checking, and we haven't really heard that anyone has done this before. And Anna Maria is a 16.8-mile loop around the island. Julie splits her time between Florida and Connecticut and is the founder of the Fresh Start Swim Series, which organizes several swim events each year. Please check out our website at freshstartswimseries.com. Hi, Julie. Hi, Lynn. Thank you so much for having me tonight. Welcome. It's, it's so exciting to be talking about this. First of all, I love swimming, and I'm very, I'm very proud of your accomplishment because that is not an easy island to swim around. There's a lot, and we'll get into that. What we'll get into is why did you want to do this in the first place? Um, how did you prepare or what kind of training goes into it? And then we'll talk about, you know, I'd love for you to share with us the different things you encountered as you swam around the island. What challenged you? What was easy? Maybe what would you do differently again? Um, what were some difficult situations? So anyways, we'll talk all of that and welcome Facebook um, participants. You are welcome to... Uh, place your comments or questions for Julie. That's why I wanted to do this live. I could do an interview and post it on my YouTube channel. But when, while we're doing it live, you are able to ask questions. And I will, Julie can't see the questions. I will just incorporate them into our conversation. And for those of you who can't stick around for about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour, I think we'll cover um, most of the questions. For those of you who can't stick around, I will post this on my YouTube channel, Lynn Griesmer, at a later date, hopefully within 24 hours. So why don't we dive right in, Julie? Why did you decide to swim around Anna Maria Island, almost 17-mile swim? Because it was there? <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, I have got a lot of great friends in the open water swim community. Uh, Jordan Valenza is one of them. He's swim with me around Anna Maria quite a bunch. I get to watch your videos all the time of you posting uh, which islands that you swim around and all the information and all the details. So you've actually inspired me. Um, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm always looking for a new challenge of something new to go, somewhere new to explore. And my husband was in town so I had a kayaker yeah, <laughs> okay. and it just seemed like the right time and the right opportunity. And, you know, 20, 2021 was a rough year uh, for a lot of things. And I just wanted to end, end it on a good note, feeling strong, feel, feeling powerful and getting ready for the new year. That's so inspiring. And I welcome everybody here watching this, this interview is not just for people who are swimmers or athletes. It's for the non-swimmer, the non-athlete. What we're going to be seeing here is an inspiring woman who did a great thing. And it's never too late to do something great. And maybe 2022 can be that for you. So if you can't swim around Anna Maria Island, maybe you can think in your own life, what kind of goal can I take on? What can I do that will like be very awesome or make me proud or challenge my skill because that's what's fun and that's what makes us happy. When we, when we challenge ourselves, when we train, when we, when we use our skill, even if it's in the workplace, if it's in your relationships, it's in your community or an athletic event. Okay, so the first thing we probably should know that you are an elite swimmer. Like how many miles did you swim last year or how, what, 
At what level are you? Give us a clue as to what level swimmer you're at. So I'm always careful with the word elite because okay. there are, there's always someone better. There's always someone faster. There's always some, someone stronger. Mm -hmm. And I would like to start by saying my high school career was nothing super impressive. I was your average decent swimmer. I wasn't a national level swimmer. I wasn't any, I, I went to States, but I was at like the lower level of States. Um, I just really enjoyed swimming. I've been swimming very hard though for the last 10 years and really expanding my horizons in open water swimming. Uh, I would say that I am at the high level amateur phase of swimming. Okay. Now you did some coaching um, for several years. Do you still coach swimming? I'm working on getting back into it. So I actually, COVID is actually how I got down to Florida and I was coaching pre COVID. And actually I, when COVID hit and I, when I was in Connecticut, I was actually coaching out of my backyard. I put tethers on four swimmers for an hour. We put headsets on and I would coach them continuously. Pretty much. I was running lessons five days a week from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m., 9 or 10 a.m., I'd take a break. And then from 3 to 9 o'clock, I'd continue coaching out of my pool. So, mm -hmm. um, so I'm looking to get back into coaching now that I'm down here more full time. And I, okay. I always enjoy sharing my knowledge with the swim community, with the triathlete community, with anyone who's new to swimming, I try to make sure that I leave the community better than I found it. Oh, that's great. I, I love that. That's, that's a very wise um, comment and very important to be productive. I tell my kids, be a producer, not a consumer. Yep. That's, that's my quote. Okay. So what about you personally? <clears throat> How much do you swim? A lot. Um, leading into this swim, uh, about two weeks ago, I put in 40 miles for the week um, mm -hmm. to really get ready for this type of swim. I knew I was gonna, going to have a supporter <laughs> and I didn't know exactly what we were going to do, but I knew I wanted to do something bigger. So I put in 40 miles. My lowest weeks, I'm at about 10. My highest, I'm about 40 or 50 miles for the week. All right. Now, how much, what percentage is in the pool and what percentage is in the open water? Right now, I'm at about 98% open water. Great. Okay. So okay. I really, I know my conditions very well. I'm very diverse as far as what I swim. I swim golf. I swim intracoastal. I swim river. I swim lake. I've got a lot of really cool, diverse experience. And I, whenever I travel, <laughs> I travel for swimming. So I've swam in Ireland. I've swam in Barbados. I've swam in Mexico. I swam open water in the Bahamas. I pretty much, the Grand Caymans, Connecticut, Maine. I've gotten a chance to swim in a lot of really cool places and a lot of really diverse conditions, which is really expanded my knowledge so that when I look at an island, I can accurately see and evaluate what I'm looking at. Great. Okay. So as far as um, swimming in the different bodies of water, do you have any favorites or do you see training as just, just, you know, training or do you have like, you do you like river, do you like cold water, warm water? Um, I would prefer to be in moderately warm water. I get very cold very quickly. And that actually um, influenced my decision to wear the wetsuit for this, mm -hmm. for this trip. Uh, I, I know for the Marathon Swimming Feder Found Federation standards, it's a non-standard equipment swim. So it can't be ratified or anything like that. But I actually got in the day before to see what my tolerance would be for... I believe we had about 67 degrees of water for the water temp for the day that I swam. Mm -hmm. And that would have put me at about three and a half hours of what my tolerance is currently. And that would not have been enough to get me around this Island. Mm. So I made the decision to put the wetsuit on so I could make it with my body temperature. I did not. One of the things that was really big for this swim 
was making sure that I did not get into trouble during the swim because there was not a lot of exit points. So I needed to be on my game for the whole swim. As far as my favorite body of water, mm -hmm. I really, really enjoy diversity. Okay. So I, when I'm in the river, I am so happy to yeah. be in the river. I love fighting the current. I love the different aspects of the river swimming, uh, especially where I'm at in Connecticut. Have Being in a tidal river is very mentally challenging, which I really enjoy. Um, I really enjoy the golf swimming that I do especially the days where it's nice and quiet and, you know, mm -hmm. the water's crystal clear and the dolphins come up and they swim with you. And <laughs> Yeah, it oh, is. It's beautiful. Me. Every, every time we get into a body of even the same body of water, it's going to be different, different conditions, temperature, current, um, just conditions, clear, cloudy, temperature, whatnot. Okay. So this swim took you seven hours and 30 minutes and 14 seconds, I think from what I saw. So let's talk about the Anna Maria Island swim itself. What did, what were the feeds? What were the food and water that you took and, and had your kayaker take for you? Okay. So I normally don't do water specifically while I'm swimming um, because I'm losing so much electrolytes and I have no reserves. Okay. So pretty much everything that I intake is either Gatorade with the electrolytes Um I do. I just actually found applesauce. Ah. <laughs> um, mix it with a little water. It's it's got the sugars. It's got some carbs. Uh, it's tastes pretty good with the salt water. Um, and then I also do strawberry milk with protein powder. Oh, good. You know, it um, fills it fills you up enough. I guess your digestion. You've probably learned over the years what you can digest and what feels good and what gives you enough energy. And how often do you stop for feeds? Um, every 30, every 45 minutes to an hour, I stopped for feeds. Okay. Um, so I probably stopped about six times for food during the swim. Yeah. Does the salt water bother you or does anything particularly bother you? Are you sensitive like nose or salt or anything like that? Not particularly. Um, if there's pollen in the water, that'll kind of like, I, I can swim with the nose plugs. I prefer not to, but I can swim with the nose plugs. I normally do that when I'm in the Connecticut river, just because um, the pollen up there tends to irritate me a little bit more. Um, mm -hmm. But the salt water really doesn't bother me so much. All right. All right. Well, let's get into the day of your swim. Now your husband kayaked for you and the conditions looked okay. It, I, I showed up and I, I was there and I swam two miles and it, it was started out a little foggy, but then the fog really picked up. I was surprised at that. So tell us um, just about uh, from this from the start. Let's get started. Okay. So yeah. So uh, you were there at the start. It was definitely foggy, and it was definitely rougher than I probably would have picked if I had an opportunity. Opportunity. I didn't really have a choice too much on days. The few days before we had other stuff going on and then it was only projected to get worse <laughs> Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And as I had a kayaker, so I wasn't going to waste an opportunity, uh, especially if I thought that I had the knowledge to complete the swim. So the current in the Gulf that day was probably moving at almost two miles an hour. Ooh, because, and my measurement for that was the last four miles only took me an hour. Okay. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's uh, Olympic, uh, Olympic 15 minute mile is like Katie Ledecky, you know, in the pool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I don't swim 15 minute miles. I don't do that in the ocean. Um, obviously current assisted I do, but, um, that's not, that's not how fast I am. That's how fast the water was moving. So yeah. that, I think that gives you a really good idea of how fast that water was. Um, that was a nice reward. Was that your last four miles? <laughs> oh, oh, that's great. You timed that well. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I definitely timed this. I honestly, that's one thing that was really important with the swim was making sure the timing was right. Uh, as, so we left at Holmes Beach. We had four miles to go pretty much to the point to the northern the northern tip of the island. It was foggy when we got in. It got foggier. Mm -hmm. uh, we probably had 50 yards visibility or so mm -hmm. 
on it 50, 50 to 100 yards visibility until almost two o'clock. The yeah. fog did not lift until we were coming around the northern tip of the island. It, so we had the current with us. We had it was definitely wavy and bumpy all the way down to, or all the way up to the northern tip of the island. When we got to the northern tip of the island, we had the and a lot of people might not realize, but the northern tip of Anna Maria Island is the inlet to Tampa Bay. Okay. So there's going to be a lot. So at high tide, low tide, that's a really high water transition area. Okay. You're going to get a lot of water moving through that area. So the water pulled me in towards the intercoastal, which okay. is what I was hoping for. And it did. And then the intercoastal moves the same direction that the Gulf's moving. Okay. So that nice four miles an hour that I had helping me, I was not quite fighting quite that, but, or the nice two miles an hour that was helping me was hurting me on the intercoastal. And so that definitely slowed me down a little bit. I think when you swim around any island, you're going to get, I, I tell people there's four different perspectives the north and the south, the passes, yep. and both sides can be very different. When, when Ken and I did Shelke, it was very shallow and we saw a different kind of wildlife. And then when we got in the Gulf, it was completely different and both passes were different and you have to allow for that. The time, it's very important to know, to keep consistency as a swimmer. I know that I would not be capable to do a successful Anna Maria Island because my mile pace in a pool is 32, 33 minutes. And what speed do you think someone should have? Because by the time the, the tides are, the water's pulling you at the Northern and the Southern, I think they have to be as fast as you at what, 25, 26 minute or less. Yeah, so, so when I'm racing in a pool, I can do 21 minute miles. Okay. Wow. To keep that in perspective. <laughs> perspective. Yeah. Um, so I would be fairly cautious for anyone that's slower than me to attempt this type of swim. Mm -hmm. uh, I think if you timed it right, so like the day that I had, if you were any slower than me, you would have had to start farther north than I did. Mm -hmm. Because if you can at least start farther north, you'll have that same pushing south. So all you have to do is make sure that you get to the southern channel at one third, like at 1 30. Okay. And as long as you're there, no matter where you start, you'll have the Gulf on the way back. So you could do, you could technically do it. If you're slower, you would just have to change the start point, but you'd also have the knowledge. You'd have to have the knowledge to know exactly where that start point should be. Yeah. For your for your your anticipated time, your anticipated so, time. So yes, yeah, so every, everybody watching, I don't think anybody can just try to swim around Anna Maria Island. Uh, it does take a a high level of skill. And um, okay, so what was your favorite part of the island or the favorite part of the swim, other than the the one hour four miles speed <laughs> to the end? <laughs> well, that was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think my favorite part was we came around the northern tip of the island and we had just entered the channel and the fog was still there, but it was kind of like lifting and going in and out. And we must have been surrounded by 10 dolphins that were just mm. having a blast throwing fish, jumping, doing whatever they wanted to do. And it was just really cool to be there with them in their environment. You know, that's one of the things about open water swimming is especially distance open water swimming. You can go for a really long time and not see anything. Mm -hmm. And it's just you and the water and the water's thick and it's dark and you're literally in this abyss of nothing and then out of the blue, there comes this one moment that just takes your breath away and makes all that work just feel like this is this is why you do it all. And that was definitely one of those moments that was just amazing. 
That's wonderful. There are some people, I know you get it. I get it all the time. Oh, maybe the dolphins were protecting you from a shark. Oh, aren't you afraid of certain things? And what do you say to people who, who focus on, on the wildlife that could be dangerous? I mean, especially in this area, I think we've had one documented provoked shark attack in the last century. Mm -hmm. yeah. Our odds, especially on this coast, we've got so many people in the water that they're not looking for, they're not looking for us. We leave them alone. They'll leave us alone. My bigger concern is always jellyfish. Um, <laughs> really? Are you, are you, um, uh, have a reaction to jellyfish allergic? No, but I've ran into some really nasty jellyfish. Oh, okay. All right. I'm, I don't I'm know. I'm not that. afraid of jellyfish. I'm afraid of boats. I'm, I'm, you know, boats are what uh, concern me. At any point in this swim, did you feel that it was dangerous or it was um, a little bit hairy? Yeah. So no jellyfish. Um, I was totally yeah. fine on the jellyfish, but coming around the Northern Point, the fog was extremely thick and there were boats that definitely did not have radar mm -hmm. that were driving very fast. Mm -hmm. um, we did not see them until they were probably, you know, 20 or 30 yards away going very fast. And mm -hmm. we were pretty much right next to the swim zone. Yeah. See, and they actually cut in between us and land, which meant that they were cutting through the swim zone to yeah. not hit us. So yeah. that was definitely the sketchiest part of the swim, but literally once, and that was only a five, five to 10 minute section. Once we were through that, the rest of the swim was really, really manageable. Um, especially the Northern tip. Once you're through, once you're around the point point, mm -hmm. uh, everything really spaces out and boats tend to go way further offshore because mm -hmm. that's where the channel is. The I channel see. comes into that North Point really tight. But after that, it's really a clear swim. There are some boats at the southern tip as well, but that's a no-wake zone. Okay. So everyone's going super slow through that yeah. area, and I felt that's much good. more comfortable in that zone. Yeah. Well, I'm, got, I'm glad everything turned out okay and that um, you got through it quickly. And what I want to say is when we set out to swim, we don't know that we're going to get in a situation. We have to deal with it. So people have criticized me before. Oh, you shouldn't have done this or, oh, it got dark or, oh, and I'm like, what can I do but make good decisions while I'm in the situation? And so uh, somebody asked, what other interesting wildlife have you seen uh, during some of your swims? You said the dolphins was the highlight of the, of the wildlife. What, what else have you seen recently or maybe on this swim? Um, this, this swim, it was pretty much the dolphins were the main highlight, but, uh, when I was in Puerto Rico, I pretty much ran into a six foot barracuda. Wow. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was much more scared than he was. He was only maybe an arm's length down, just kind of, and he just watched me roll past. I could see all of his teeth and he just watched me. <laughs> Yeah, just my, you know, just, we really just want to mind our own business and the animals yep. just want to mind their own business. I, I don't know what's going to provoke you. I, I don't, I guess I don't have the fear that some people do. I, I mm -hmm. have an awareness when we're out in the water, we have an awareness and, and you're just aware and you, to me, I feel like I'm a visitor in the water and the animals live there and I just do my thing and stay away and just keep going. And, um, I mean, that's actually one of the reasons why I swim is because of the really cool things that you can see. Um, I was down in the Grand Caymans and I saw a spotted eagle ray that was, you can't see, but he was yeah. huge. Yeah. And I've never seen like the like picture. Like a six foot wingspan. Wingspan. Yeah. <laughs> he, was, yeah. he was huge. And yeah. I mean, they're just so gentle and so peaceful. And I had like that polka dot, like, cause they're like deep navy blue with like almost like seventies polka dots on them with these like big polka dots. And you're just yeah. like, how does that even occur in nature? <laughs> and we see things close up, pelicans. It's, it's beautiful. It's, it's really a wonderful perspective. You can't see, you know, zipping by in a boat or, or whatever. And it's just, we're really, 
I love the freedom of open water swimming. Okay, um, Denise asks, um, do you ever get tired at any point? This was seven and a half hours, 17 miles. Do you get tired? Um, I do get tired eventually. Um, there was one mile on that swim where my legs were a little bit tight in my hips, but I felt really strong throughout it. Uh, that being said, I went swimming today and I was absolutely exhausted. I had about half a mile in me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some days it, our body just is ready to do things and, and some days, you know, not. What is the longest distance that you have swum consistently? So this was one of the longest swims that I've done. I did do a 20 seven miles down the Connecticut river. So I swam from Hartford to Middletown. Wow. In nine and a half hours that was current assisted. Oh, nice. That's oh. neat. I'm familiar with that. I grew up in Connecticut, but I never would have, uh, in many years ago, the water was kind of dirty, but you say that it's cleaned up in the last 30 years and, and it's yeah. swimmable. That's yeah. There's a, there was actually a really huge open water swim movement to get the water cleaned up. I was not part of it. My predecessor, my predecessors yeah. were. Um, so I owe them a huge, huge thank you because the river actually is swimmable today. And it's, it's actually some of the nicest water I've swam in, um, especially north of Hartford, because nobody was there. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, it just was not something anyone would do when I was growing up there. Okay, so welcome to Facebook. Those of you just joining us, please type in your comments or questions, and I love to ask them, pass them on to Julie. I think we've um, addressed most things that people have said. So um, what else do you want to say about this swim that I, that I might not have asked you about? Uh, how was your kayaker's experience? That is a long, seven and a half hours and seven. At one point you were saying he, he couldn't keep up with you. Yeah, we had 12 ish mile an hour winds on the back end. Wow. Yeah. Um, so for anyone who doesn't know mile an hours, for wind, my, uh, 12 miles an hour is about when you're going to start getting white caps. Uh -huh. <laughs> so he, and you know, the back of the islands, eight miles. -ish. Yeah. So he definitely had a really rough go of it in the back end. Mm -hmm. And there was a point where he looked down at me and he was not happy. <laughs> he just looked at me and he goes, why? Yeah. Why? <laughs> We all have those moments, but he couldn't bail out. You're, you weren't going to quit. He Did he want to kind of quit? He, he really wanted to quit. And it made it harder because we actually had to pretty much kayak past our house mm -hmm. um, or at least the exit to our house. Yeah. So he def there was a point where we were talking and I'm like, if you want to go get the motorboat or if you want to go do something wow. else, I can just either wait here or I can keep going and He's like, nope, nope, I'm with you to the end. And yeah, you, you didn't want to stop. You were not stopping. I was not stopping. I was going to make it. Um, mm -hmm. I knew I could do it. And, you know, we, I had the diver flag with me too. So if he had said, I need to pull out, I had the diver flag. I could have used towed that just to have the extra vil visibility. But there was no way that once I got to that point where I only had about two miles left that I was going to back out. There's yeah. no way. Yeah. I don't All right, let's see. Yeah, it's a couple people. Um, what was the average water temperature during the swim? And um, yes, you did use a wetsuit. You used a wetsuit, a sleeveless mm -hmm. wetsuit. But what what was the water temperature that day? Sixty five to sixty seven. Okay. I thought it was very comfortable. I went in and did two miles. I didn't I didn't know it was you know that cold. I think I'm acclimated, so I'm just com very comfortable, very refreshing. All right. So Mia asks, what kind of training do you do other than water? Do you do strength training? Do you do yoga? Do you run? Do you flexibility? No, you're just, you must be young. I am, <laughs> you're, yeah. No, no, no. Uh -huh. you're, you're under 35. <laughs> um, I do, I do stretch, not as much as I should, but I do stretch. Um, I do a lot of massage because I don't have a lot of energy for stretching. So okay. I do massage probably once a week. If I'm doing a lot of swimming, I'll up that to, to, mm -hmm. to twice a week. 
but I don't do any strength training and I don't do, not that I won't do other activities. Like I can go kayaking. I'll go kayaking. Um, I like to, I have three dogs, so I spend a lot of time walking my dogs, Okay. Um, but I don't run for training. I don't bike for training. I don't do weights in the gym. Uh, everyone looks at me and they're like, there's no way you don't do weights. I don't touch weights, but I put a lot of effort into my swimming. Yeah. And if you, if you do household activities, certain household activities are hidden, keeping you in shape, you know, the walking, the dogs, uh, you don't do any abs or anything like that or planks. No. no. Okay. You're just, I can, <laughs> but I, I don't, but it's, it's funny. I heard you say, I don't have the energy to do strength training or stretching and you probably don't have the interest. If you have the energy to swim 17 miles <laughs> and you don't have the energy, <laughs> I think you don't have the interest. Maybe like, you don't like, maybe you don't feel it's important. I've heard that the sport you're going to do is the sport you should train in. So if you want to become a good swimmer, focus on swimming on your skill on that training Cross training is good, but if you want to become a better swimmer, do more swimming. Yep. So, yeah, and I find that swimming's diverse enough. So, you know, I don't do specific ab workouts, but I'll do my underwater butterfly kicks, which mm -hmm. hit my abs. Or, yeah. you know, I'll do different things, like I'll do um, egg beaters. I'll do different varieties of swimming so that I get a more balance than than just the freestyle but I really don't do anything that's, that's too, too outside of the water zone. I, yeah. I, I like my water. I'm happy in my water. Good. I, I know like it. it. And we live in such a great place here to just year round. It's wonderful. Okay. I think a, a couple of people have joined us a little bit later. Somebody asks how many days a week do you swim and about how many yards each week on average? I know we, when you first started out, you said between 10 miles and 40 miles, 40 is like when you're preparing, but, um, is there anything that you wanted to add to that, your weekly swimming? Um, so really what I do and I focus on the most is I don't really think too much about the yardage or the mileage or the hours. I really try to pay attention to my body. So uh, I will go and if I feel really good, I will go until I don't feel good anymore. Okay. And... Now, do you, okay, so you, this could be three miles. This could be eight miles. Do you take enough liquid and feeds or whatever in case what? In case I might do eight miles today or whatever. So you're, you, you take a lot of extra with you? I normally take extra with me, but I'll also train without fuel. So I wound up getting into a position while I was swimming Alligator Lighthouse, where, which is eight miles, and it took me six hours, and I had no nutrition for six hours. And why is that? My kayaker couldn't reach me because of the wind. Okay. And every time we stopped, before he could get the fuel out, <laughs> he was gone. <laughs> so he, he wound up just having to focus on finishing and staying close enough to me that I didn't disqual get disqualified for not having a kayaker. Um, and Alligator Lighthouse taught me a lot about swimming. And this must I have knew. been this past year with the tough conditions. Was it, was it 2021? No, this, um, this was about five years ago. I think this was 2015. Okay. Um, and we just had a really rough year. The wind was intense yeah. and my kayaker couldn't get to me. So I wound up having, and I felt really not great by the time we finished. Uh, yeah. It was, um, like it was breaststroking <laughs> and just, yeah. trying, just trying, just trying for forward progress by the time I finished. And I wanted to be prepared if I ever got in that position again, that I would be able to finish the, you know, eight to 10 miles without fuel. So I will do specific training like that. Wow. Um, yep. Yeah. Prepare. I don't know if I could endure that. My body wants enough water and nutrition to, I, I don't think I could push. I've, I've had times where I've had nausea and vomiting. And so I think I've gotten dehydrated. So I, so let's, we need to talk about the importance of kayakers for the, for marathon swimmers, open water swimmers. Um, I want to make an appeal to those of you who are listening or wa watching this, who live in the Florida area to volunteer as a kayaker is, is a godsend to us. Many times we can't do these activities because we don't have a kayaker. So you can be paid, you can volunteer, you can work on your skills. And it's a lot of fun. And the kayaker 
only has to be as fast as the swimmer. So my husband says, oh, I only have to be as fast. You know, it's easy for him. <laughs> yeah. But your husband had to keep up, you know, in the wind and the conditions. So that might be a different story. So very important to get kayakers. There's always seems to be a shortage of kayakers. It's very important. And and it's a skill. So, you know, kayaking. It is. And Actually, it's you really did important Anne Maria. for kayakers to learn the different conditions, too. Mm -hmm. Because... You know, we were talking about the wind that I had for, for our day. I knew 12 would be right about borderline. But if we had three or four miles an hour more of wind, it would have been dangerous for him. Mm -hmm. So making sure that the swimmer's aware of what the kayaker can do, making sure that the kayaker's aware of what the kayaker can do, and really paying attention to the environment is huge. Mm -hmm. Um I got mm -hmm. me and my husband went down to the keys and he was paddle boarding with me and he gave me some misinformation about the tides. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> and so it happens. It really happens. It, it does. does. It does. It, 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 and it can happen very quick, especially if you both don't know the area. Um, and we had swam the area once that day. We had done like a down and back and we were in kind of a channel ish area. And I was like, oh, let's just go do one more of these. So we were just going to repeat the same route we had just did. It was a 30-minute route, no big deal. Uh, and during that 15 minutes, the tide changed enough so that there was no way that I was going to be able to get back to the start. Ooh. So I wound up having to swim in towards shore and letting him take the paddleboard back. So making sure you know what to do in those situations and yeah. making sure that it's not just the swimmer that knows, but the kayaker knows or the paddler knows as well is really, really important that you have your exit routes. Good point. And where was this again? Uh, this was down in the Keys. Uh, I believe it might have been Duck Island. I can't remember exactly which one it was. I just remember it was a little bit south of here. We'd gone to visit some friends. I needed to get my swim in. Mm -hmm. um, and... I, that, that left a really, really nice little marker in my head of like, you really need to learn your ties and really need to be paying attention and not just trust and not just jump in. And maybe notify the Coast Guard or somebody like one of the swims I want to do, I want to swim around Sombrero Lighthouse. That's off. It's in the Keys and it's off of Marathon. It's five miles out, five miles back. But if I, if I do this, I'm going to make sure I have safety uh, things set up for it just in case, you know, just in case. All right. There's also, it's very important to take a kayak safety course and different communities offer it. I know Whedon Island offers like a two or a three hour. What would happen if you capsize, if you're, if you spill over, I think you go out and you practice that. So it's good, good to take courses and to practice. All yeah. right. Um, let me see. Uh, do you do any pool meets? Are you going to do any pool meets in 2022? I don't have any planned. I'm absolutely willing to do pool meets uh, if there's something local and I find out about it. I'll, I'll go and have a good time. I like doing relays. Um, but I, I don't have anything on the calendar as of yet. All right. Um, do you have any recommendations for apps for people to use, um, whether with the tides or with the, the wind or things like that? Um, wind finder is great as mm -hmm. far as, as winds. Um, it'll let you know which direction. It'll let you know how strong. It even gives nice colored arrows to let you know, um, you know how strong, how weak um, different winds are. And then I normally use tide forecasts. Okay. So it's, I just go on online and look up the local tides and what time they're going to be hitting. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really, as far as the tides go, those are the, the most important time to pay attention to the tides is when you're doing island or mouth of river swimming. It won't mm -hmm. really affect you too much if you're staying in front of a coastline. All right. Sounds great. Is there anything else that you want to say about your Anna Maria Island swim? I had a, I, it was a great swim. I had a blast. I hope that in 2022, everyone can find something 
that they that inspires them as much as the Anna Maria Island swim has kind of inspired me. And you know, it's it's really important to to look for that next level for yourself. I agree. And, I definitely agree. You know. And so speaking of next level, you decided to start a, let's just take 10 minutes to talk about what you started in this community and, and the one community that inspires probably over 2000 people, including visitors. Visitors come to swim with Clearwater uh, from all over the States, um, just many places. I've met friends from Michigan, New York, and we get together when they come here and we swim together. So you started the Fresh Start Swim series recently. And tell us a little bit about some of the events or the reason you do this and what it's for. Well, so the reason that I started the Fresh Start Swim series is obviously I'm a swimmer. I love swimming. I love, uh, I love giving people opportunities. And so I actually just became the board, a board member of Forgotten Coast Canine. We train veterans to train their own service dogs. And I was looking for a way to raise funds, raise awareness. And I was like, you know what? I know swimming. <laughs> this would be a lot of fun to do. And I've, I've coached meets. I've been around meets, uh, open water, all that. And uh, I wanted to give people an event where they could start fresh. Because mm -hmm. I feel like that's what we provide for our veterans uh, as we're training them with their service dogs. We give them that opportunity to start their lives over. Yeah. And that's what I also want to inspire in the swimming community is, you know, in, in November, we have the 500 meter. Anyone can do 500 meters. Yes. You can pretty much walk the, the course for the 500 meter mm -hmm. just to get into the water and get that experience. Uh, we have the 2.5K. If you like a little bit more of a sprint but don't want to quite do the 500, we have the 5K. We have the 10K. Um, we have Honeymoon Island coming up. So if anyone's looking at this and is like, I want to do an island, but I'm not quite sure if I want to do it solo yeah. <laughs> um, or on my own, we're going to do an eight mile around Honeymoon Island. We're going to do the four mile if you're not quite comfortable if you haven't trained up for the eight mile or you want to figure out what the terrain looks like or before you commit to the full eight miles, because eight miles is definitely a physical commitment. Yeah. Um, we have, we're going to offer the two mile. Uh, so, and then we have Madeira beach in June 4th. Mm -hmm. We're going to do a run, swim, run. Okay, great. <laughs> How awesome is that? Yeah, that's great. Um, that way, you know, you can do a little bit of this, a little bit of that the same day, mm -hmm. June 4th, not just doing the run, swim, run. We're going to do the 5K. We're going to do the 10K. I wanted to give people opportunities to go yeah. and be a community. And, you know, we have live music at the events so that there's always something going on. We have an amazing local artist. Um, her name's Sue Mizuchi. She does these beautiful plaques um, <laughs> that are displays and... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I won in my I age mean, group in November. It's really oh. nice. It's really nice. <laughs> I mean, yeah. That's something you put up on your wall and people can come <laughs> in and they would be just like, oh, what is that? And what's really cool is so for each big event that we have, so for Madeira Beach, for Honeymoon Island, for the St. Pete swims. We ha we're working with her for the same type of plaque, but each one's going to be unique for the island. Mm -hmm. So it's it's just fun to give swimmers opportunities to go new places, to go do different distances, go do different swims, and you know to build that community because you know especially with COVID, we've we've all lost so much. Yeah. And this is something that's totally doable, and it's you know nothing's ever a hundred percent safe, but there's no fun in safety. If we're a hundred percent safe, we're not living. <laughs> right. Um, You're too cautious. You're staying home inside all the time. Yeah. And so, yeah, I would, I would recommend people go to the fresh start swim series.com website because you also are looking for volunteers, always looking for volunteers, <laughs> always appreciate volunteers. In fact, I'm signed up for the eight mile honeymoon Island swim and I'm signed up to volunteer in administration 
for the November St. Pete swim. So I'm excited to volunteer. So just find out what you can do and what you want to do and, and get started. And it's, and it's very excited. Um, it's very exciting. And I'm, I'm glad that you offer this. And when you moved here, you met the one and only Leo Bricino. He and Coral Owen are very active in the community, offering events, offering their time and their talent all the time, 24-7. And so if you are a member of Facebook, there are many places you'll find the Swim Clearwater Facebook page. You'll find St. Pete Pier. You'll find Harbor Island, down, downtown uh, Tampa group. And, uh, the Swim, Swim AMI has their Swim own. AMI. I was getting to them. And Madeira <laughs> Beach uh, has a Facebook page. And if you're not on Facebook, you can go. Coral Owen keeps... Um, current events listed. They will they will uh, schedule events to the Rainbow River, which is like an hour and a half north near Ocala in in Janelle in Florida. The SunshineOpenWater.com is a great website to go to if if you don't participate on Facebook. And I'm sure there's other places you can go for the information, but you can start with those Facebook groups. You can start with those websites, and uh, we we hope to see you around in the water. Um, let's see what, what else did we want to mention this evening? Um, I want to, I want to ask somebody are asking, um, what, what is next on your plan? And I got, I have some ideas for you. If you haven't thought of these, um, bring it on, bring it on. What do you all want? Right, I'll bring it on. on. All right. Swim around St. Pete. I think that's 12 miles. Yep. And that's on the list. It's on the list. Good. I don't know if anyone's done that yet. Or I'm not sure. I've heard. Um, swim around Clearwater. I think up to 10, five to 10 people have done that. They did it right when COVID was starting. Yep. At least five people went out that day. And that's about 14 miles. That one's on my list for the end of this year. I, I need to work. I'm in the I'm in the eight to 13 mile range and I, I want to bump it up just a little. So I think I could handle Clearwater with more training and, and more months. All right. How about this one? Um, Paul E.V. mentioned and Cloat Key. That's about 10 miles. You have to go really north, north of Honeymoon Island, off the coast of Holiday, Florida. I think it's three miles off the coast. So you could jump in and swim and go swim the 10 miles around and swim back. But I might want to have a boat escort me out and just get out on a kayak and then maybe do that. But that will take some navigating. That's that's got um, that's out in the middle of, of, of the ocean there of the Gulf. Well, we can talk. <laughs> OK, what about this one? All right. This one, I know two people have done this and this is a highly skilled um, Folly Island in Charleston, South Carolina. Go take a weekend trip with your husband up to Charleston, nine, nine miles north. Folly Island is 16 miles and I think it's a little bit like Anna Maria Island. You, you have to be fast and strong and you have to time it. And uh, when I swam the suck in Chattanooga in October, I met one of the women. I think she's in her 20s or she's in great shape. Sarah, she swam around Folly Island and I think she's training to do Catalina. Um, and she, and I said, Hey, what about Sullivan's Island? Cause I lived in Charleston for nine years. And now that I'm swimming longer distance, what about Sullivan's Island? And she said, well, Sullivan's Island has a very strong channel that even the strongest of the strong, she wouldn't recommend. So you could go around, um, Sullivan's Island and Isle of Palms. So check that out. I don't think anyone's ever done that. That's about 21 miles. I was looking at that today. And that would be out of my league, but to do a loop around Sullivan's Island and Isle of Palms. But I would recommend Folly Island. That would be a good one. But um, anyway, so can you share? Do you want to share with us a couple of the swims that you're, you're thinking about this year? Um, so I don't want to quite share yet. Um, right. I'm still in the process of planning uh, and just trying to figure out logistics and all that sort of stuff but i promise as soon as i figure them out i will definitely let the swim community know yeah good and i i have some up my sleeve too that would involve two kayakers you i couldn't have one 
one might take me 11 hours at my pace. Um, and I think I would want two kayakers for that. And I think I'm going to do it. But but anyways, yeah, it's always great. Okay, everybody. Is that watching, one that I know about? Do you know about it? Do I no, know? it's not one that I mentioned. So I'm just going to keep it quiet. But that's cool. Um, those are you listening. <laughs> Yeah, I'm keep I'm keeping my own secrets. I, I have some I, I already told you I want to do sombrero lighthouse. Um I don't know what else I mentioned. Clear water. I would it's like to do water at the end of the year for me though. I'm I'm not ready yet. And um I do want to do Fort DeSoto. I think that's gonna be a very challenging one, even though it's eight miles, the way it's laid out. Fort DeSoto. I definitely want to do Lido Key. I've done about 10 islands in the area so far. I want to do Lido Key. So I don't think that's going to be too difficult. It's just a matter of, and again, having your kayaker availability. I need to find more kayakers. I'm trying to get some. Yeah, Lido, Lido Key is definitely one that you're going to want the boat for. Yeah. Um, I boat know or kayak? It. What was that? Do you mean boat or kayak? A kayak. A kayak. All right. Some, sometimes it's important to have boat support or jet ski support, you know. Yeah, no, you should be fine with a kayak. Um, there is, so I had been warned about the marinas on Anna Maria Island. Uh, I had no problems. I, there are definitely boats somewhere on Anna Maria Island, but swimming the back end of it, the marinas are not really a big problem. I passed one marina that was definitely worth having a kayak for, but the rest of it was pretty, pretty quiet. And Lido Key is kind of the same way. Most of it's pretty quiet, but you're going to get one marina that's definitely worth having uh, having the kayak for. And then Anna Maria, depending on what day you go and what time you hit it, mm -hmm. the Southern Channel can get a lot of boat traffic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. And that's an important thing that I, I thought of is that most of these islands I like to do on a weekday. Don't go on a three-day weekend. It's funny. When my husband and I were taking a look at Treasure Island, I did Treasure Island last year, and that's eight miles. I love that swim. Treasure Island was really nice. And so we went and we reconned, and he rode, and, and it was very traffic -y. And we're like, wow. And after we left, we were in the morning. After we were leaving and we drove over the bridge to, to go out to lunch, we saw like hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of boats, and we found out later it was some type of Trump boat rally. It had 2,000 boats. And, and we were like, whoa, we don't want to come out on a weekend. But, but that was, and I think that broke a world record. I think they had 2,000 boats. But we were like, wow, there's a lot of boats out here. So keeping to a weekday yep. and, and just being smart about that. Because really, as a swimmer, it's the boats that are more worrisome to me than the wildlife. Absolutely. By far. Absolutely. The and the and be smart about biggest. the weather too. If, if you're out on a swim and you hear thunder in the distance, maybe okay. But if you're seeing lightning bolt, you know, get out, get out of the water. You'll know when you really should get out of the water. All right. Um, so people are writing in. Thank you for the interview and major congratulations on your swim. And um, anything else you want to add before we, uh, we, before we depart? Um, I just want to say thank you to the open water swim community. Your support is huge. Swimming is a solo sport, but it's also a huge community sport. If you're not a swimmer and you're looking to get into it, 95 to 98% of us are absolutely amazing. We're super welcoming. A lot of us have knowledge that we're willing to share. So come and enjoy that. And, um, to, to the hogfish, I couldn't have asked for a better New Year's with you guys. It was so nice to go and swim with you and be named Hogfish of the Year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, <laughs> that made my year. That's going to stick in my heart for the longest time. You guys were absolutely amazing. I To inspire someone else, I feel, is the biggest accomplishment that you can have on the mm -hmm. earth. So... I hope that I've inspired someone else. I know that there's a ton of swimmers who have inspired me over the years. So to all of you who have paved the way for me to even dream this stuff up, because if you walk the beach, nobody's thinking about this stuff. 
there's right. there's like that thing you saying about the beach. So to those of you who have paved the way, you are absolutely amazing. I really appreciate your influence on the sport and I just hope I can do you justice. Well, Julie, you are absolutely amazing. You inspire all of us. I, we loved hearing your story and just keep doing what you're doing. It just rubs off on the rest of us to, to run out and, and make our own goals. And like you said, just take yourself up a level, take yourself up a notch. And I want to thank you so much. And like I said, I will post this on my YouTube channel, Lynn Griesmer. And I just want to say it's never too late to do something great. So go out and do something great. Thank you, Julie. Have a great night and thank you, Lynn. Okay, bye.